Today, let's explore the different traveling lifestyles families adopt to make full-time travel a reality. <laughs> I'm your host, David Cole, and welcome to the Our Offbeat Life podcast. We just want to travel. We just want to travel. We just want to see something bigger than us. We just want to travel the world. We just want to meet someone different from us. We just want to travel the world. To see and smell and taste something completely new. We just want to travel the world. World schooling is a unique approach to education that combines traditional academics with real world experiences through travel and cultural immersion. There's no one size fits all approach to world schooling as every family situation and needs are unique. Some families prefer slower paced, long term travel lifestyle while others opt for shorter trips and frequent location changes. Regardless of the style of travel, there are certain educational needs that need to be considered. One popular lifestyle is slow travel, where families stay in one location for an extended period, often months, or even a year before moving on to the next destination. This approach allows for a balance between education and cultural immersion as slow travelers immerse themselves in the local culture and community, gaining a deeper understanding and appreciation of different ways of life. Flexibility in education is crucial for this type of travel and lifestyle, as parents can take advantage of their extended stay to enroll their child in a local school or participate in community education programs. For example, while we were doing our two and a half year drive from the USA to Ushuaia, Argentina, we stopped in Cotacachi, Ecuador for three months. Now, this is not a big place, but it was a great place to slow down. We quickly made friends with a family that had a son about our son's age, and we were able to schedule lots of time for them to hang out. This met some much needed social education time that he had been missing. We also found that by slowing down, we were able to take more time off of working and spend more time with him exploring the area, unschooling, going to regular farmer's markets, immersing ourselves in, in with the locals. By the time we left to resume our travels, it almost felt like we were leaving home again. But our son made a new friend that he still talks to and made lasting memories that he still talks about. Heck, he even learned how to take care of a horse while we were there, including helping me muck out the pen. On the other hand, some families opt for fast travel where they are constantly on the move. In this case, online educational programs become essential as they provide con continuity in education while traveling. Maintaining consistency in education amid frequent relocations can be um, challenging. But leveraging online resources and virtual classrooms helps sustain the structured learning environment. With fast travel, time management is key. Parents must ensure that their child has a designated space and schedule for learning while also balancing exploration and experiences during travels. We have also had our fair share of experiences with this one. During our drive of the Americas, we sometimes spend a night here and a week there and such. While this was rewarding in its own way, it was difficult to maintain a steady educational approach with our son. Thankfully, he was enrolled with Kubrio at the time, and their flexibility was greatly appreciated. He was able to go to class when we could, and due to the nature of a lot of the classes, he rarely felt like he was missing something or behind, except once in a while, like with a coding project or something. But he had an awesome instructor who sometimes stayed behind with him and another student, helping them with their questions. 
Another option is part-time travel, where families spend a portion of the year traveling while also having a home base. This combination allows for more stability and structure in education. The home base can serve as a place for the child to attend traditional schools or take part in extracurricular activities, while travel can be incorporated during school breaks and holidays. Now, we dabbled with this a little during the COVID-19 pandemic, there were times when the Malaysian government relaxed restrictions and we were able to travel and explore a bit. This felt a bit like uh, taking vacations and we weren't always thinking about education, but we found ourselves falling back on the unschooling model during these trips. We would stop and talk about a line of leaf cutter ants or take a tour of a strawberry farm and talk about why Malaysian strawberries are so much smaller than the ones we were used to back in the U.S. For those considering world schooling, let's explore a few popular traveling lifestyles. We'll talk a little bit about overlanding, flying from place to place, slow travel, multi-generational travel, sustainable travel, house swaps, and even house sitting. So <laughs> let's start with overlanding within your home country. See, this lifestyle offers the comforts of home while traveling and discovering new areas. Families can homeschool, utilize online education programs, or enroll their children in local schools during their stays. It's crucial to ensure ample space for educational materials and set aside dedicated times for lessons, unless you're planning to unschool. Then, workbooks are irrelevant. Uh, overlanding encompasses a few different modes of transportation, RVing, driving and camping, driving a camper van, and uh, even driving and staying in hotels or Airbnbs like apartments and things. They all provide the flexibility and opportunity to explore at your own pace. Next, let's look at overlanding through a, uh, a foreign country. See, this unique experience allows world schooling families to immerse themselves in local cultures and communities outside their country of passport. Similar to home country overlanding, online programs, homeschooling, unschooling, and local school enrollments are all viable um, educational options. Planning and scheduling lessons while ensuring sufficient space for educational materials is essential. Again, unless you're unschooling. There are unique challenges with this approach, which is why we separated it from uh, home country overlanding. Depending on where you're coming from and where you're going, there may be special visa rules to enter different countries. And again, there are special rules for getting permits for your vehicle to enter a foreign country, even if it's the one right next door. See, we've crossed scores of countries by land with our car from the U.S. over the last few years and have found that it usually takes at least two hours to cross a border as opposed to flying into a new country and getting entry permits from customs and immigrations within 15 to 30 minutes. So while it, this lifestyle and choice is not for everyone and it's not for the faint-hearted, we absolutely loved our Pan American Highway road trip from Las Vegas, USA to Ushuaia, Argentina, and then back up to Buenos Aires and Brazil. Uh, you can see a link uh, to some content about that adventure in the description down below. So next up really, for many digital nomad families, the ultimate freedom comes from flying from place to place without a permanent home base, otherwise known as fast travel. This lifestyle requires effective time management as long stays in one location are rare. Prioritizing tasks and being flexible to adapt to changing circumstances is crucial when you're constantly on the move. With limited time at each destination, you need to manage your schedule efficiently to ensure essential activities like schooling are completed. Minimizing educational resources is also key due to luggage constraints. 
The carry-on only approach allows you to travel light while ensuring essential items are always accessible. Leveraging digital resources like online courses, apps, ebooks, uh, just to reduce reliance on physical materials is paramount. However, this nomadic lifestyle offers unique learning opportunities at every new destination. Immerse yourself in the local culture by engaging with communities and participating in activities. Seek out educational resources like libraries, museums, or community centers to enhance your world schooling experience. Adapting to consistently changing environments is part of the journey. Be prepared for different climates, cultures, and customs by thoroughly researching each place before arriving. Maintain flexibility to smooth transitions. Finally, choose accommodations wisely. Reliable internet access is non-negotiable to facilitate online learning and opt for spaces with dedicated areas like desks or quiet nooks to create productive study environments. By mastering time management, minimizing physical resources, embracing local experiences, adapting to new surroundings, and choosing accommodations thoughtfully, flying from place to place is an incredibly enriching world schooling experience without being tethered to a home base. Next, as we talked about a little bit earlier, slow travel is a lifestyle that many digital nomad families like us embrace wholeheartedly. While we've experienced flying from place to place without a home base, as well as overlanding within our home country and abroad, we always find ourselves drawn to the slow travel approach. In fact, I like to call us slow mads because uh, we're slowly nomadic, generally staying put for at least a month at a time. Uh, the biggest advantage of slow travel is the opportunity for deeper immersion in local culture. When you linger in one place, you get to experience it like a temporary resident rather than just passing through as a tourist. Renting an apartment or a house allows you to settle in and develop routines. It also is very cost effective compared to constantly moving. Well, this travel style blends perfectly with other models too. We've flown internationally, then slow travel regionally. We've overlanded across countries, stopping for extended stays wherever appealed to us. The flexibility to mix and match styles tailors the journey exactly to your family's needs and preferences. From a family perspective, slow travel is incredibly bonding. All those stretched out, unrushed stretches of time can create tight-knit memories. It's also phenomenal for children's education through culturally immersive experiences. My child learned more life lessons in six months overseas than he would have in years at a desk. Of course, it's not without its challenges. You have to be extremely intentional about your time management. So work, leisure, and family responsibilities stay balanced. And it takes effort to move beyond being a tourist and start integrating with local communities. Looking back at over half a decade where we make slow and fast travel, the life lessons were invaluable. See, we learn to live more presently, to savor the richness of the uh, ordinary routines in extraordinary settings. M my tips for families are manage your schedule ruthlessly. Seek out community connections through things like language lessons, and most of all, linger with intention. Don't rush the special sauce of slow. All right, now, while I haven't yet had the chance to, to travel extensively with my own parents and siblings, Brody did it as a kid. She spent two weeks every summer traveling with her parents, sister, and grandfather. It really stuck with her. Even decades later, and she says some of her best childhood memories with him are from those vacation weeks. And I've met several other intrepid multi-generational travel crews on, on the road, seeing grandparents, parents, and children all exploring the world together 
It really is truly inspiring. At its core, multi-generational travel enables precious shared experiences and bonding across age groups that you just can't replicate in any other way. Like imagine popping into a restaurant together in rural Italy with your kids chatting away with to their grandparents about mm, the Renaissance frescoes that you admired that morning. Those are the kinds of vivid memories that become part of your family's shared heritage. Brody still tells the story of the fish that got away with her grandfather. From young kids absorbing the seasoned wisdom of their elders to older adults getting energized by their grandchildren's youthful curiosity, and the intergenerational learning goes both ways. Each generation has so much to teach and so much yet to discover about the world. Of course, coordinating the logistics of a multi-gen trip takes careful planning. The accommodation could be anything from a large vacation rental to a resort or a cruise ship equipped with uh, meeting these diverse needs. You'll want to craft an itinerary that caters to varying interests and energy levels while allowing plenty of downtime too. Speaking of energy levels, that's one of the biggest potential challenges. Uh, you may have older members who can't be as active as they'd like while youngsters are raring to go. Uh, mobility restrictions are another age-related hurdle, so vetting accessibility is key. Little things like Choosing the right travel insurance with sufficient medical coverage are vital as well. Ultimately, managing expectations is crucial for harmonious journeys. Getting the whole crew on the same page about priorities, budget considerations, and boundaries will pay off. And don't underestimate the cultural differences that could emerge between generations. Something as simple as social media habits or nap times for little ones and grandparents, can become a friction point. A little empathy and open communication go a long way. But when it all clicks into place, multi-generational travel creates the most magical memories. See, I've heard so many heartwarming tales of these experiences deepening family closeness. My advice? Be prepared to compromise. But above all, Cherish the opportunity to connect in irreplaceable ways across generations. For many digital nomad families, sustainable and socially responsible travel is a core part of their lifestyle philosophy. We prioritize eco-friendly options like staying at eco lodges, using public transportation where possible, and wholeheartedly supporting local businesses over big chains. Reducing environmental impact is so important given how much traveling families like us are on the move whenever feasible we know many fellow travelers that opt for green transportation these are things like electric rental cars carpooling or even biking across entire countries as a family this is especially true if their kids are old enough i'll never forget the incredible eco lodge we stayed in in belize so we were communing with nature in those log cabins, hiking the property's trails. It really drove home the value of low-impact tourism. Of course, sustainable transportation uh, infrastructures can be limited or non-existent in some countries uh, or different corners of the world. So we we should always do our best to make responsible choices that minimize emissions and waste the sustainable travel mindset goes far beyond just environmental considerations though by really slowing down and staying put for longer stretches you can immerse so much more deeply in local cultures and communities we've known families who have volunteered with conservation initiatives such as uh, wolfing uh, to better understand regional issues. Heck, my wife and I are always eager to learn about traditional crafts and buy directly from artisans. See, 
this I feel helps uphold local heritage. My my family tends to find ourselves drawn to local artisans. Like my wife really hates all that tchotchke that you find all around the world in the tourist spots. But when she sees a local sitting in a stall, carving, painting, weaving, or whatever, she gets really excited and talks to them about their craft and will likely buy something that they are finishing or making while we are there. So our travel souvenirs are almost always handmade items with a great story. Those kinds of meaningful local connections move you far beyond the typical tourist bubble. They shape a more holistic understanding of the places that you visit and the people who call it home. It's a powerful perspective to be able to share. In fact, I see digital nomad families as grassroots ambassadors for sustainable, responsible travel. We can raise awareness of local initiatives through our social media platforms and advocacy, but it's important to first invest time in truly experiencing communities hearing their needs firsthand rather than making assumptions, that approach of mutual understanding is the strongest foundation uh, for positive impact. At the end of the day, it's about finding that balance between exploration and sustainability, reducing flight frequency through longer stays in each destination, favoring train and bus travel over flying where possible, embracing slow travel so you can consume fewer resources while going deeper into the culture. Sustainability may add a layer of complexity to your travel logistics, but for digital nomad families, it's an inspiring opportunity to really reshape our mindsets and behaviors in a way that preserves the beauty of our global backyard for future generations. Last but not least, we're diving into two super cool ways to travel the world without breaking the bank. House swaps and house sitting. So trust me, as an experienced house sitter, I've got some stories and tips that you won't want to miss. So let's start with house swaps. Imagine this. You are swapping homes with another family. They stay in your home while you stay in theirs. It's like trading places, but with a much better view. There are some awesome platforms out there like Home Exchange and people like us that make it super easy to connect with other families looking to swap. And here's how it works. You set up a profile upload some snazzy photos of your home, and start searching for your dream destination. There are different types of swaps too. You can do a simultaneous swap where you exchange homes at the same time or a non-simultaneous swap. If you have a second home or uh, a flexible schedule, there's even a hospitality exchange where you stay with the other family while they're home, instant friends. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Why would you want to do this? Well, first of all, it's a huge money saver. No accommodation costs. Plus, you get to live like a local in a real neighborhood with a real house. It's like having your cake and eating it too. A comfy home base while you explore a new city. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Right? You have to trust strangers with your home and they trust you with theirs. It can be a bit nerve-wracking, but that's where communication comes in. Clear expectations and a good agreement are key. Also remember to check if your insurance covers home exchanges. It's just better safe than sorry. And now let's talk about house sitting. This is one of my personal favorites because who doesn't like free accommodation with a bonus of cuddly pets? <laughs> Trusted house sitters. Mind My House, these are fantastic platforms to find these opportunities. You get to stay in someone's home while they're away, often in exchange for pet care or light house maintenance. Creating a great profile is crucial though. Think of it like a resume. Highlight your experience, get some references, and maybe even a background check. It helps build trust with the homeowners. One of the biggest perks of house sitting is cost savings. So 
Imagine staying in a cozy house in the French countryside for free just because you're feeding a couple of cats. Plus, it's a great way to experience living like a local. You're not just a tourist. You're part of the community, even if it's just for a little while. But with great power comes great responsibility. I mean, you've got to take care of the pets, water the plants, maybe even mow the lawn. It's important to be reliable and honest about what you can handle. Make sure the house sitting opportunity fits your family's needs and lifestyle. Now let me share a quick story. My family and I once house sat a in the Mexican town of San Miguel de Ende. This house sit was smack dab in the middle of Centro, a short walk to the Zocalo. <laughs> it was a beautiful three-floor home with a rooftop balcony. We were there to take care of two indoor-outdoor cats. Once they got over their initial timidness, we were able to get all the pets, snuggles, cuddles, and everything that we had been missing while on the road. I was able to see and feed hummingbirds all day long. They were right next to my computer set up out in the, the one of the rooms. The, the house was in a narrow local alley, and every day the local kids would knock to see if our son wanted to come out and play. <laughs> the, the local tamale vendor came by every morning. We felt like we were in heaven. We, we met other traveling families in the area and were able to explore together. And get this, we're still friends with those uh, homeowners. We have a standing invitation to house it for them again. We were told to contact them if we're ever planning another trip in the area to see if uh, they want us to stay there so they can go on a vacation. <laughs> so for all of you digital nomad families out there, both house swaps and house sitting offer incredible ways to travel affordably and comfortably. Be flexible, plan ahead, and communicate clearly. And don't forget the logistics. Visas, health insurance, schooling for kids. Join local expat groups in nomad communities to make the most of your experience. Okay, folks, <laughs> that's it for this list of travel lifestyles. This list is not the end-all be-all of ways digital nomads and world schooling families travel, but it's a good start. Each of these lifestyles offers unique benefits and challenges, allowing families to choose the one that best fits their education and travel goals. We'd love to hear about your experiences with various modes of travel uh, or lifestyles, such as house swaps or house sets. So share your stories on our Facebook or Instagram page. Feel free to ask any questions you may have by dropping us a message or leaving us a comment. Uh, no matter the type of travel and lifestyle, it's essential to have a balance between education, exploration. Uh, you want to incorporate different forms of learning, whether through traditional schooling or online programs, allowing for a well-rounded education that combines both academic knowledge and real-world experiences. Remember, the key is to finding a balance that works best for you and your family. Embracing freedom and flexibility that world schooling offers. So don't be afraid to step outside the traditional educational system and explore the world as your classroom. Whether you're a slow traveler, a fast traveler, or somewhere in between. Make the most of every moment and embrace the beauty of learning together on your travels. In our next episode, we'll be exploring age-based learning and multi-age learning. So don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified when it goes live. Thank you for joining us as we discuss travel lifestyles today. Until next time, keep your hearts open, your passport handy, and your sense of wonder alive. This is David signing off from Our Off Be Life. We just won't need someone different from us To see and smell and taste something completely new We just want to travel